Keeping up with AI, it feels like every time you turn around, there's something new, right? Yeah, it's always evolving. It can be tough to keep up. One minute, it's all attention is all you need, and the next, bam, new algorithm on the scene. Exactly. That's what we're looking at today, though. We're diving deep, deep dive into FFTNet. Okay, interesting. It's all about making neural networks faster, more efficient. And we've got our source, the research paper itself, uh -huh. so, plus some uh, study notes to kind of break it down. Nice. So think of it like the, uh, having the cheat sheet and the professor's lecture notes. <laughs> so big question, is FFTNets the real deal? Well, we'll see. By the end of this, you'll be the judge. Definitely causing a buzz. Um, good reason, I, the paper, it really gets at a fundamental problem. Okay. The uh, computational cost of self-attention, those transformer models. Right, right. Comparing every data point to every other data point gets ridiculously slow as your input starts to grow. It really does. That's where FFTNet it uses a really clever trick, mm. the fast Fourier transform. FFT. Yeah, FFT, borrowed from signal processing. Okay. And what they do is they apply it to analyze the relationships between data points, but in a much more efficient way. I see. Instead of that, you know, exponential slowdown with traditional self-attention, they manage to achieve a complexity of O log n. Wow. Which is, that's a big improvement, especially when you're working with these massive data sets. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I'm intrigued. Yeah. But how does it actually work? What's happening under the hood? Well, the key innovation is in how they leverage FFT to create something called adaptive spectral filtering. Okay. Think of it, uh, think of it like an equalizer. For data patterns? Yeah, for data patterns. It learns which, which frequencies of information are the most important. Interesting. Allowing it to just focus on the, the relevant parts of the data. So it's kind of like tuning into the right channel on a radio. Yeah, exactly. Filtering out the static. Get to the good stuff. Get to the signal. Exactly. So it's selectively amplifying... Um, certain features while suppressing others okay makes the learning process way more efficient and to to make this even more powerful they introduce a special activation function okay it's called mod real u and it's specifically designed to work in the frequency domain mod really that sounds pretty technical what's it doing think of it as a gatekeeper okay controlling the flow of information within the network it refines the signals you know pass through make sure that only the most relevant ones contribute to the final output so like a bouncer at a club only letting in the vips yeah exactly the ones that are actually going to make the party happen okay i like that analogy and the exciting part is that this combination of fft adaptive spectral filtering and mod real u it allows FFTNet to achieve performance comparable or even better than standard self-attention. Wow. But with significantly less computational overhead. That's a bold claim. Do they have the results to back it up? They do. They do. They show impressive performance on, on a variety of benchmarks, including Long Range Arena. Okay. Which is specifically designed to test how well algorithms can handle these, you know, those really long sequences of data. The ultimate test. So how'd they do? They did really well, actually. It outperformed both um, standard transformers uh -huh. and um, another algorithm called FNet. Hold on, FNet. Didn't they use the Fourier transform as well? They did. They did, but um, FNet relies on a fixed transform, uh -huh. so it's less adaptable gotcha. to different types of data. FNet's adaptive spectral filtering gives it a, a big edge. So it's not just faster. Yeah. It's smarter in a way. Exactly. Able to adjust its approach based on the data. That's exactly right. And it's that adaptability that allows it to, to really shine, especially when you're dealing with complex real-world data. Okay. They tested it on ImageNet, which, you know, ImageNet, massive image database. Staple of AI research. Exactly. And the results were very promising there as well. So, so we're talking about real-world applications here. Yeah. Not just these, you know, theoretical benchmarks. Did it hold its own against the the big players in image recognition? It did. It did. It achieved uh, comparable, even better accuracy than VAT. Okay. Which is, you know, the industry standard. Yeah. And it did it all while using significantly fewer computational resources. This is starting to sound like the real deal. Yeah. But are there any caveats? There's always a trade-off. Right. Uh, the paper does acknowledge that the adaptive part of FFTNet, it can get complex. Okay. For very long sequences, especially when you're dealing with, you know, thousands or even millions of data points. Right. But they do propose some pretty clever mitigation strategies. Ooh, mitigation strategies. Now you've got me curious. We'll have to dive into those a bit later. Yeah, I think we need a moment to let all of this sink in. Agreed. Before we explore 
uh, those mitigation strategies and really kind of unpack the broader implications. It's a lot to process. Absolutely. We want to make sure you're fully equipped to, to really understand this groundbreaking algorithm. Yeah, absolutely. Welcome back. Now, before we took a little pause there, we were talking about uh, how FSTNet handles these long data sequences. Right. It's a challenge, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Even for an efficient algorithm like this. Absolutely. Those adaptive elements, powerful, but they can get a little resource intensive. They can when you're working with those massive data sets. Yeah. So let's let's dig into those mitigation strategies the researchers proposed. Okay. You mentioned something about downsampling frequency bands. Right. What exactly does that mean? So remember how FFT, it kind of breaks down the data yep. into its, its component frequencies? Like analyzing a sound wave. Exactly, like a sound wave. And each of those frequencies, it's represented by what we call a frequency bin. Okay. So imagine imagine you have a sound uh -huh. with so many frequencies that your equalizer that has a million knobs. Oh, wow. Downsampling is like grouping those knobs together. Okay. So you're controlling broader ranges. Instead of fine-tuning every single tiny detail. Exactly, exactly. You gain a lot in terms of efficiency. Okay. And in a lot of cases, that trade-off is it's worth it. Makes sense. What about this parameter sharing? Right. How does that help? So instead of having, you know, completely unique settings for each bin, you allow adjacent bins to kind of share some of those settings. I see. So you're streamlining the, almost like the control panel. Yeah, exactly. Using using similar configurations for similar frequencies. Okay. Reduces the number of unique parameters that the algorithm has to learn. It's like it's like optimizing the code, right? Exactly, exactly. Finding ways to reuse elements, get rid of redundancy. That's a great way to think about it. It's all about making the algorithm leaner, more efficient, without sacrificing too much accuracy. Okay, those strategies, those make sense. But then you mentioned low-rank approximations. Right, right. That sounds a little more mysterious. It is a bit more technical, but essentially it's a way to represent the frequency information okay. in, a, in a more compact form. Okay. Imagine, imagine you have this giant spreadsheet filled with data points. Okay, yeah. Low rank approximation is like finding a smaller spreadsheet that still captures those important patterns. Like creating a summary. Yeah, like a summary of a long document leaving out the less relevant details. Okay, so you're you're extracting the key points. Exactly, exactly. And that reduces the computational burden on the algorithm. I see a pattern here. All of these strategies are finding ways to simplify but not oversimplify. Exactly. It's about striking that balance. Between efficiency and accuracy. Exactly. And they did expensive experiments to show that, that these strategies actually work. Okay. They tested, you know, different variations of FFTNet uh -huh. with and without these optimizations. Right. And they found they could significantly improve efficiency without a substantial drop in performance. So they stress tested it. They did. They did. They really wanted to make sure it could handle those real world applications. Okay. This is all very impressive. Yeah. But I think it's time to shift gears a bit. Okay. Talk about the bigger picture. Sure. What does FFTNet mean for AI? What's the impact? Well, I think that's the really exciting part. Okay. Uh, one of the biggest implications is the possibility of, you know, democratizing AI, making it accessible to more users, more devices. Okay. Imagine running these complex models on your phone, on drones, even tiny sensors. So it's not just making things faster, it's making AI more portable. Yeah, more ubiquitous, exactly. And that opens up so many possibilities, you yeah. know, personalized healthcare, real-time translation. Wow. Hyper-realistic virtual assistants. It's like AI is coming into our daily lives. It really is. And it's not just about gadgets. You know, this kind of efficiency boost, it could have a huge impact on research, data analysis, any field that deals with large data sets. So we're talking about things like analyzing genomic data, climate models. Exactly. Exactly. Understanding the universe. Okay, you've you've blown my mind officially. It's exciting stuff. But let's let's be realistic for a moment. Okay. Even with all these advancements, are there downsides? I mean, as AI becomes more powerful, more accessible, doesn't that raise some concerns? You know, it's it's really important to consider those ethical implications. Yes. Especially with a technology this powerful. Absolutely. We need to have open and honest discussions about responsible development. I completely agree. I think that deserves its own deep dive. It does. It does. We'll definitely be exploring that in future episodes. For sure. But for now, let's let's get back to the specifics of SFT now. Okay. We've talked about the why, the how. Right. But what about those performance metrics? Okay, so let's start with, um, you know, Long Range Arena. Yeah. Which is designed specifically to test how well algorithms handle those extra long sequences. Right, right. Give us the highlights. What kind of performance gains are we talking about? 
so on the the list ops task, which involves, you know, processing sequences of mathematical operations. Okay. FFTNet, uh, it achieved an accuracy of 37.65%. Okay. Compared to 36.06% for the standard transformer. Right. And 35.33% for FNet. So, I mean, those might seem like small differences, but... In the world of AI, even a fraction of a percent can be huge. Especially when you combine it with those efficiency gains. Exactly. What about ImageNet? How to do with image recognition? So, on ImageNet, they compared FFTNet to um, VAT, mm. which uses that traditional self-attention. Right. And the results were, they were really encouraging. Okay. FFTNet achieved comparable or even better accuracy while using way fewer computational resources. So we're talking real-world performance gains. Real-world gains, exactly. Not just theoretical. And they even provide this visual. It compares the latency okay. or the time it takes to process the data for different batch sizes. Okay. And it clearly shows that SFTNet, it scales much more efficiently okay. as the batch size increases. So it can handle these larger volumes of data without slowing down as much. That's convincing evidence. But did they did they do anything that kind of break down the contributions of the different components? They did. They did what's called uh, ablation studies. Ablation studies? Where they remove or modify certain elements. Oh, interesting. To see how it affects performance. Okay. And what did those reveal? Well, they found that removing the... Um, the spectral gating mechanism okay. led to a noticeable drop in accuracy. Interesting. So it really highlights how important that is. So it's it's really the synergy of all these elements working together. Exactly, exactly. It's not just the individual components, it's how they interact. That makes FFTNet so powerful. Exactly. I'm really impressed. I feel like I've got a much deeper understanding of FFTNet. Good, good. And its potential impact. But uh, before we wrap up, I've got one final question. What's next? Where do we go from here? Well, that's, you know, that's the beauty of research. It opens up more questions than it answers. Right. AFTNet is still relatively new. It'll be interesting to see how it evolves. You know, will it become the standard? Yeah. Will it inspire even more efficient algorithms? Only time will tell. But one thing's for sure, the quest for faster, smarter AI, it's not going away. It's only going to accelerate. Absolutely. And you, our listeners, you now have the knowledge to follow along. Yeah, you've grasped the key concepts. And you've got a few analogies. Exactly. To impress your friends at your next AI-themed gathering. There you go. Don't forget to check out the show notes for links to the research paper, study guide, glossary of terms. We got you covered on your AI learning journey. Yeah, absolutely. As always, you know, we encourage you to think critically yeah. about the implications of these technologies, both the positive and the challenges. Absolutely. The future of AI, it's a shared journey. It is. And informed discussions are so crucial as we navigate this rapidly evolving landscape. Couldn't agree more. Okay, so we've, we've established that FFTNet is uh, making some pretty big claims. Yeah. In terms of efficiency performance. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm curious to see how it actually, how those claims hold up in practice. Right. What about those specific results on Long Range Arena? So on the Pathfinder task, yeah. which challenges algorithms to, to navigate uh, you know, these complex paths through graphs, yeah. SFTNet, it achieved a really impressive accuracy, okay. 98.9%, wow. surpassing the standard transformers 98.4%. That's significant. Yeah, and it really highlights FFTNet's ability to, to capture those long-range relationships. Even in those, those really tough scenarios. Exactly, exactly. Okay, what about the other tasks in Known Range Arena? So they also tested it on a on a task called Retrieval. Okay. Where the algorithm has to find the most relevant document. Right, right. From this huge collection. Yeah. And here, FFTNet uh, achieved a recall of 94.8%. Okay. Compared to 94.3% for the standard transformer. Again, small, but, but notable. Yeah, and especially when you consider, you know, those efficiency gains. Absolutely. It's fascinating to see how these these small differences that can have these huge implications yeah. in, in real world applications. Yeah. Now I want to, I want to shift our focus a little bit to ImageNet. Okay. We talked about this a bit earlier, mm. but I, I want to dig into those specifics. Okay. How would FFTNet perform on those image recognition tasks? So they tested it on, on various image classification tasks using ImageNet. Mm -hmm. And the results were they were really compelling. Give me some highlights. So, for example, they used a version of FFTNet um, with 12 layers, okay. prepared it to a similarly sized by by model. Okay. And FFTNet achieved a top one accuracy of 81.7%. Okay. While the VIT model achieved 81.5%. So they're essentially neck and neck. Yeah, pretty much. 
But what about what about the computational cost? That's where FFTNet really shines. Okay. They found that FFTNet used significantly fewer floating point operations. Which is a measure of? A measure of computational complexity. Okay. Compared to that VAT model. So we're talking faster training times. Faster training times, lower energy consumption. Okay, so, so it's more uh, sustainable. Way more sustainable more scalable. Exactly. That's that's pretty incredible. It's remarkable how it it manages to maintain that accuracy while while significantly reducing the burden. It is, and it has the potential to really change the game for image recognition, especially, you know, for applications that require real-time processing right. or or those that are operating on devices with limited resources. Mobile applications, drones, even medical imaging. Exactly, exactly. I mean, speed and efficiency in those, those are absolutely critical. Yeah, absolutely. And they even tested FFTNet on this uh, challenging task called ImageNet Shield. Okay. Which uses a more realistic distribution of images. Right. And and the results were consistent with what they found on the standard ImageNet benchmark. They they really put FFTNet through its paces. Oh, they, they, d they really wanted to make sure it was, it was robust, yeah. versatile. And it and it really seems like it is. Yeah. I think I think what's what's really amazing to me is how how this algorithm it pushes the boundaries of what we thought was possible. It does. In terms of efficiency, performance, it, it's it opens up all these new possibilities. It really does for AI applications across so many different domains. I completely agree. It's 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 really a testament to, you know, the power of innovation. Yeah. The pursuit of progress. It makes you wonder. What else is out there? What's coming next? That's what I love about this field, that constant evolution, the push for better, faster, smarter algorithms. And thanks to this deep dive, our listeners, they are now equipped to really understand these advancements. Yeah, you've got the knowledge now to follow along, to appreciate those breakthroughs as they happen. Absolutely. We explored the the intricacies of FFTNet, the fast Fourier transform, the adaptive spectral filtering, those mitigation strategies, how it stacks up against the competition. Lots of ground covered. We really did. We covered a lot. And I hope our listeners feel empowered to, to continue their exploration yeah. of this uh, fascinating algorithm. Remember, check out the show notes for links to the research paper, the study guide, all those resources. First thing you need to delve deeper. Absolutely. And as always, we encourage you to engage with these advancements thoughtfully. Yeah, think about those benefits, those potential challenges. The future of AI is a shared journey. It is. And informed discussions are crucial as we navigate this, this rapidly evolving landscape. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, until next time, keep those minds curious, and we'll catch you on the next deep dive.